Uh, welcome to the February 10th uh, Town Council meeting. If we could please have the roll call by the clerk. Chairman Adams. Here. Councilor Devereaux. Here. Councilor Gabrielson. Here. Councilor Garvin. Here. Councilor Caitlin Jordan. Councilor Penelope Jordan. And Councilor Straw. Here. Thank you. Um, and now we'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay. Um, any town council reports or correspondence this evening? Uh, I just want to report since our last meeting, uh, the Metro Region Coalition organized a tour of a um, supportive housing facility in Portland, uh, part of our efforts to look at regional solutions to affordable housing, um, the affordable housing shortage in the area. Um, and uh, it was a very interesting tour, um, great facility, and there'll be some discussion, I believe, at tomorrow's region on some uh, regional strategies that we may look at adopting with um, other towns to help address that that problem that we discussed last fall. Great, thank you. Yes, Amy. Uh, thanks. Uh, two things. I attended last week uh, the uh, Legislative Policy Committee meeting for the Maine Municipal Association. Um, nothing really of significance to report back, uh, just to let you all know that I was there, though. Um, secondly, uh, this week there's a couple Eco Maine meetings, um, uh, Eco Maine Board meeting and Outreach and Recycling Committee meeting. And with the Outreach and Recycling Committee meeting, the two things I want to make a plug for are uh, number one, that the uh, upcycle. 2020 challenge uh, continues. Uh, so there is an opportunity for folks to win uh, a $2,020 prize um, in uh, coordination with Maine's Bicentennial um, by creating uh, an upcycled project uh, and then uh, submitting that for judging uh, to the folks at EcoMaine. So that's open until sometime in March, but you can find all the details at ecomaine.org. And secondly, the annual um, contest to paint uh, the silver bullets uh, that you see um, in some of the neighboring communities um, is now open as well. So uh, folks interested in that can find information on the EcoMaine website for that as well. Thank you. Thanks. Anything else? Um, so I'll turn it over um, to Jamie for the Finance Committee report, please. Thank you very much. Uh, so included in tonight's packet is the usual financial dashboard and all of the control uh, documents for appropriations and things like that. Um, so as we mentioned last, uh, last month, we were sort of at the halfway point of the year. Um, nothing uh, sort of uh, remarkable about uh, any changes, I don't think, in, in any of the line items here. Happy to field any questions on that. Um, and if there are none, um, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be further discussion about it, but we met, um, was it just last week? For the audit? Yes, yeah. Uh, 29th. Yeah, oh my goodness, it seems like weeks ago. <laughs> uh, so we uh, met with our auditors last week um, and got an uh, extremely favorable um, uh, review in our annual audit. Um, the, most of the members of the council were there and participated in that, as well as um, some folks from the school board as well. So uh, happy to see that, and I'm sure Matt will address that more in his manager's report coming up. Um, so if there aren't any other questions? Nothing else from the finance. Oh, and we did have our, last week we had um, our uh, semi-regular joint uh, subcommittee meeting with the leadership from the um, school board. Uh, we were talking some about uh, uh, some of the preliminary work that the school leadership has been doing on budget. They are always ahead of us by um, about three or four weeks. Uh, our upcoming budget uh, meetings will be in March, um, I think on the 17th and 18th. Um, and one new thing that I would mention for this year is that the um, meetings are going to be, uh, I'm sorry, they're on the 18th and 19th, not the 17th and 18th, so March 18th and 19th, and those will be um, recorded. Uh, so if you're not able to come and participate, they will be available uh, for viewing after the fact. That's all I got. Thank you. Um, so before I turn it over to Matt for the uh, manager's report, is there anyone here who'd like to speak to an item not on the agenda this evening? This would be your opportunity for that. No, 
seeing no one. Go ahead, Matt. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm happy to bring my manager's report for February 10th. Uh, to begin the manager's report this evening, I would like to recognize Officer Ben Davis, who's with us this evening, and Ryan, Officer Ryan Wagner, who is not with us this evening. They recently received the Life Saving Award from the Maine Association of Police at their annual banquet. Officers Davis and Wagner took actions last spring to save the life of a gentleman that was unconscious in an attempted suicide. The officers responded, provided medical care to the individual until paramedics arrived on the scene, and the gentleman had traveled to Maine from out of state with the intention of taking his own life. But due to their efforts, he was saved, treated at a local hospital, and released. Both officers have our gratitude, and with their advanced training, they help make a difference in the lives of Cape Elizabeth and apparently of greater, of greater Maine. Congratulations to both of them on the recent honor, and Ben, uh, to have you here tonight. I'm proud of you, sir. You. Uh, we're glad to have you here. It's always good to start with a positive. So thanks, Ben. Uh, speaking of the police department, next week at the Thomas Memorial Library, officers will be hosting a Cupcake with a Cop event. The event will be free and at 1.30 p.m. on February the 20th. So what a great way to spend part of your uh, February break at the library. Uh, the town currently has two requests for proposals open. The first is for the proposed solar power project at the recycling center. And these proposals or responses are due back by March 6th. The RFP is available on the town's website. The second request for proposals is for the Ships Cove mobile food vendor site at Fort Williams Park. Bids will be accepted on that until February 20th at 2, at 2 p.m. and they'll be opened here in the chambers. Applications for the 2020 Great Pond Boat Storage Lottery may be submitted starting February 17th and they are accepted until March 13th. The drawing will be held on March 16th. There are 32 permits available and this is a very popular lottery, so enter early. Tina Sweeney of the tax office has retired and we would like to wish her well in her next chapter of life. The town is currently accepting applicants for this position. So if you are interested, you may contact our finance director, John Corderaro, for more information. The council, school board, myself, and the finance director and school business manager met in workshop with the auditors on February 20, uh, sorry, January 29th, not leap year yet, uh, to receive the annual audit results. The results were well received and there are, were no deficiencies or critical statements. The audit reports will be on the upcoming council agenda for formal acceptance. I uh, just want to say, I want to also single out John Cordero and Marcy Weeks from our finance department and business office individually uh, for their great efforts as long as, as well as with their staff. So it was a fantastic report this year. Uh, finally, all departments are working on our annual budget, which will be delivered to the council on or before March 6th. So respectfully submitted. Thank you, Madam Chair. Happy Thanks. to answer any questions. Any questions for Matt? Um, okay, next item is review of draft minutes from the meeting held January 13th, 2020. Um, do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Councillor Devereaux, a second. Councillor Straw. Uh, all, any discussion on the minutes? All in favor? Okay. Um, moving on to item 30 2020, the Bird Dog Roadhouse liquor license. Um, the Cape Hospitality Group LLC DBA Bird Dog Roadhouse is requesting a renewal liquor license at 517 Ocean House Road. Um, is anyone here wishing to comment on this from the public? Yes, you can step right up to the podium. Please state your name and address. I'm actually the applicant, Helen Muther. I'm one of the owners of Bird Dog Roadhouse, and so I'm just here to answer any questions if you need to regarding the renewal. Thank you. Um, any questions from the council? I have a question for you. I noticed that you've been closed for quite a while. Um, you're planning to reopen, is that why we're renewing this? Or are you planning to sell it and you're gonna sell the license with the building? 
Um, actually, you can't sell a license with a building. Um, so yes, we're hoping in the next couple months to get business going again, and we spoke to the state, and they suggested, because we're on just a hiatus, to make sure we get our license renewed. Yes, Councilor Strong. Uh, so uh, I asked this of the town manager earlier today, which might be why you were here, or maybe you're going to be here anyway. No, I was um, come anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so I had noted that the the applicant is listed as um, Cape Hospitality Group, but the owner in our assessor's database is a different entity. Um, so it sounds like uh, I don't want to elevate form over substance, but it looked like uh, one document says this is the owner in the application, but our assessor's database says, says a different entity is the owner. Right, how yep. it works is yep. uh, 517 Ocean House LLC is um, the company that owns the property and the building, which happens to be my husband and I. And then Bird Dog Roadhouse is the DBA for Cape Elizabeth Hospitality Group. Cape Elizabeth Hospitality Group has a lease Got it. So it's with, got it. Okay. It, that's how it's set up. Our CPA tells us to set it up. And so we have to apply for the license as the operator of um, the, the company selling. So line 17, perhaps it would have been the owners, the whatever you said the other one was. But either way. Because the, we're the owner of the liquor yeah, license. Yeah, yeah, I don't but, know. Yep, yep, they told okay. me to do right. it that okay. way at the state. Long story short, you're all the same in yeah. a person. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, do I have a motion to approve the malt, liquor, wine, and spirits liquor license for Cape Hospitality Group, LLC, DBA, Bird Dog Roadhouse, located at 517 Ocean House Road? Councillor Garvin, is there a second? Councillor Gabrielson, uh, any discussion on this? Good yes. Question. I assume there have been no issues reported. All okay. clear. All Thanks. clear. Yep, thank you. All in favor? All right. Um, thank you. Item 31-2020, Town Center Sidewalk, segment number one. Um, the town will be constructing three sections of sidewalks in the town center in 2020 and 2022. Town Center Sidewalk, segment one is proposed for construction in 2020. Segment one is located on the northern end of the town center on the east side of Ocean House Road, extending from Cumberland Farms to the Methodist Church. The sidewalks are being designed to match the town center's standard. Um, and this project is a, a packed municipal partnership initiative agreement between Maine DOT and the town of Cape Elizabeth and PACTS. Um, do we have Mr. Harding? Or do we have? Yeah, Mr. Sturgis. Mr. Sturgis. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have an overview of the project? I'd, I'd be happy to, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what we are looking to do is uh, look for council action to accept the, uh, the MPI grant that has been uh, granted to the town uh, in the amount of $90,000 to help partially fund uh, this segment of sidewalk. Uh, this, is a, uh, this is a section that we're looking to build in the coming, uh, the coming summer. And it's from, as I said, from Cumberland Farms to roughly just this, the Cumberland Farms side of the Methodist Church driveway. This is an important link at the current time uh, with the Crosstown Trail. So you can come out and it'll, it'll terminate at the Crosstown Trail ending. A person can come down through there, come across the Cumberland Farms, and then uh, presumably use the other crosswalks to cross uh, across the end of Shore Road and then the other uh, safe pedestrian crossing that we have this side of the intersection to get through uh, the center of town. Uh, but we're looking at uh, the town receiving that. We'll be funding the other part and it'll be part, we'll want to go up to bid this spring so we can get a number uh, hopefully by you know early March to come back to the council for the FY21 budget. Uh, we'll also partially fund that with a carryover fund from this year's uh, sidewalk uh, budget that we have. Uh, so we're gonna allocate some of the funds from there. Uh, so it's, it's an important one. We had, uh, we rarely receive MPI grants. Uh, generally in, in our center, we're in the central subregion of PACS and that includes us with our friends in Portland, South Portland and Scarborough. Actually, Portland and South Portland, sorry. Uh, so we're in the central region. So generally those funds are used by Portland and South Portland, but in this case, uh, they've seen the wisdom of trying to help us get this portion uh, uh, constructed. So that's why we're looking to do that. The other two uh, segments are segment seven and eight in the uh, sidewalk parts that'll be two years out. And that's part of a PACS grant that we have we applied for and the council had already accepted uh, those funds, but that'll be for a budget two years from now. Uh, this was kind of something that uh, 
we weren't sure we were going to get, we did receive it, so it's, it'll help us offset the funds. So we're looking to get those, this all shaped up in time for the upcoming budget season. And that's why we brought it here in front of the council tonight. Thank you. Um, before moving on to council discussion, is there anyone from the public wishing to speak on this item? Um, okay. Um, do we have a motion to accept and appropriate the $90,000 grant from the Portland Area Comprehensive Transportation System Municipal Partnership Initiative Agreement for the period of August 20, 2019 through 2024 for the Town Center Sidewalk Segment 1 project with the remaining local share to be included in the fiscal year 2021 budget? Councilor Gabrielson? And Councillor Devereaux, thank you. Uh, any discussion with the, from the council? Yes. Quick question, Matt. Was there any, do you know if there was a lot of feedback from the public information session held on this recently? Thank you, if it may through the chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Garvin. Yes, uh, I'm so glad you asked because I was going to uh, jump in with that one part. We did do outreach to all the abutting properties and uh, we received uh, the, the abutters to segment seven and eight. Uh, we had some interest from them who, came, who would come in. I reached out to Cumberland Farms directly myself to let the manager know. Uh, last time we were doing some work, they felt that they didn't get enough, we, we, did, we contacted corporate, but not locally. Mm -hmm. So we contacted both corporate and I went and spoke with the manager. So they were in favor of it, but they didn't come. To, we did have a public session uh, that was advertised and uh, it went well, but, uh, but we didn't receive any negative uh, comments regarding this. It's all been positive, so. It'll be a nice improvement. I think it'll help the Methodist Church as well, and, and as well as some drainage uh, that will help move some of the uh, you know, storm water through the center of town, as well as part of this. Thanks. Um, anything else? All in favor? Thank you. It's, I'm sorry, I forgot to say it. it's unanimous. <laughs> Um, okay, item 32-2020, Fort Williams Group Uses. Um, on January 16th, 2020, the Fort Williams Park Committee voted six to zero on a number of group uses at the Fort Williams Park for 2020. Um, those are all outlined specifically in tonight's agenda. Um, one item of note is that the Fort Williams Park Committee at the direction of the council reviewed the group use fee for Beach to Beacon and um, by unanimous vote increased the fee to, or a six to zero vote increased the fee um, from 25,000 per year to 27,500 and that will be revisited in March for years after 2020. So is there anyone here from the public wishing to speak on this item? No, seeing none. Um, do I have a motion to approve the um, following 2020 group uses and fees for Fort Williams Park, recommended six to zero by the Fort Williams Park Committee on January 16th, 2020, as presented in the agenda? So moved. Councilor Gabrielson, is there a second? Councilor Garvin, um, any discussion on this item? Yes, Councilor. So I'm gonna be voting no on this. <clears throat> and uh, I realize I have uh, a additional background that the, the rest of you are probably lacking here. So I'll give you my best recollection of how this all panned out. Um, so my recollection is the fee for the Beach to Beacon was set in 2011 at $25,000. And the Fort Williams Park Commission reviews its fees every three to four years. And as you may recall, I was on the Park Commission in roughly 2016, something like that, when the fees came up for review again. Um, I had proposed at that point, I said, well, we looked at all the fees and there was most of the discussion at the time was about the trolleys and the buses, as you can imagine. Um, but I said, you know, all of these fees at a minimum, it seems like we should be raising fees at the rate of inflation. Our costs keep going up, our fuel costs go up, our uh, employment cat contract costs go up. Like, we should be charging an increased amount at inflation for at a minimum for all of these fees. Uh, so I raised that with, um, the, uh, with uh, Beach to Beacon. And as part of that discussion, uh, my recollection was uh, the Fort Williams Park Commission was like, well, how did we even come up with this 25,000 number in the first place? Well, like, where does this come from? Because the fee structure otherwise says for person intensive uses, it's a fee of $5 a head. But we've, for some reason, created this uh, special setup for this one entity. 
Um, so was, what's the justification? And um, my recollection is that we made that query and the response back we got was there's no real explanation. It was just the prior town manager and one of the people involved in Beach to Beacon just between the two of them came up with this number. And then it got basically passed through and everyone said, eh, there's a good number. Uh, so I said, that's great. So at a minimum, it seems like we should, we should be raising this because it hasn't raised since 2011. This is in 2016. At a minimum, we need to raise it by the rate of inflation. You know, The registration fees keep going up. Our costs keep going up. But in real dollar numbers, the amount that we're charging them is dropping. So let, let's raise it by the rate of inflation. Um, uh, I, uh, to, to, for, I, I kick myself to this day, I then didn't make the next Fort Williams Park Commission meeting. I had some conflict and uh, there was then a vote while I wasn't there, 6-0, where they said, yeah, we're gonna keep it at 25,000. I got, great, so, uh, so be it, on it went. So it went to the town council. The town council then discussed all of the fees is my recollection and they had a pretty uh, vigorous debate, but I think there was almost no time really spent on the beach to beacon fee and it was instead mainly buses and trolleys and do we raise this fee or do we not raise this fee? What will be the impact on the gift shop? Um, point being then, so it stayed at 25,000. No real discussion by the town council. Um, we had had a vigorous debate at the park commission, but it ended up going, we, we just stuck with the 25,000 and didn't adjust for inflation. Uh, the fee, my understanding of what was proposed by the park commission, and again, I could be wrong, was the, dis the discussion was it's gonna be 25,000, but we're just gonna set it for two years and then we'll revisit it. So it was supposed to be set, my understanding was, was for 2017 and 2018 at 25,000. So you recall last year when this fee came up again, I was scratching my head. We had had so many other things going on, as you recall, uh, that I dropped the ball and I didn't really pay attention like what was going on. And when it came up, I was like, wait a second. My recollection on the Park Commission is we're supposed to be getting a new fee. It was, we'll keep it at 25 for two years and then we're gonna revisit it. Like, whatever happened? Did I forget about this? Did we vote about it? I, I, I just don't remember. Uh, so I brought it up at the last meeting, or at the meeting last year. I was like, well, what happened to the fee? I thought this 25,000 was just through 2018. What about the 2019 fee? We were supposed to get a new fee from the, the Fort Williams Park Commission was my recollection. And we just said, eh, we'll just, we'll go with, we'll go with the 25,000 again. Which brings us now to this point where basically we have a fee that was set at 25,000, which to my understanding has no, it was just an arbitrary and capricious number that was come up, uh, that was that the town manager and the one of the Beach to Beacon reps came up with. We have a fee structure that otherwise says any person intensive use is supposed to be $5 a head. This one entity gets basically a special deal that no other entity gets. If the Make-A-Wish Foundation comes in and says, I wanna have a race with 6,000 people, the fee for them is 30 grand. But for this entity, we've said, it's 25,000 without any just rationale that I'm aware of. And when the Park Commission asked previously, no rationale was really given. So we have that background. 2011, it was 25,000. Now the proposal is let's increase it 10%. If you break that out over the decade, we're saying we're gonna raise it 1% a year. This kind of, it, it recalls what we had last month. We have, the, there have been the issues with the kind of cleaning up and getting everything running really well in the town for the last few years. We've done a great job. We, the, we brought in a finance director, kudos to Matt, kudos to the town council, kudos to the finance director. Look at our audit last year, we're doing a great job. We're, we're on our track to go for GFOA certification, which will give us like the gold star of, of Maine. We're looking at, it, it, we're, we're addressing the fact that we have tenants who aren't, we, we have a tendency, we're fixing that. We're, we've now, one of the proposals for the town council for our goals for this coming year is let's start looking at these fees and make sure we're reviewing them and not letting them sit untouched for 10 years. When our costs are going up, our fees need to go lockstep. Part of our review structure every year should be, we're look, okay, how much do we have to raise everyone's property taxes? At the same time, we should say, well, how much should the, rev the, the revenue we're raising from these other activities go up? Now's our opportunity to fix this. I realize everyone loves Beach to Beacon, oh, all this goodwill, but the thing is every single entity, anyone that comes to the fort and asks to use a group use from the fort should be charged the exact same amount. We should not be in the basis of picking winners and losers. We have a fee structure that says $5 a head, and I don't see what the rationale is for us to continue to give this one entity, which is not a 501c3 is my understanding. This is a for-profit entity is my understanding. It is not Make-A-Wish Foundation. This one entity should be paying the same fee everyone else pays, $5 a head, and for that reason, I'm gonna vote no on this. Uh, any other comments? 
Um, I, I have to agree with Chris, and I've um, talked to quite a few residents in Cape about this, and um, so many people are upset with the $25,000 fee. They feel that um, Beach to Beacon makes a lot of money, puts a lot of stress on the park. It's a fabulous um, organization. It's a fabulous race. However, um, 25000 and now 27500 is not enough. I think that at the very minimum it should be 30000 and we can talk to John and find out what um, inflation rate would have been on 25000 for the last 10 years, what, what they actually would be paying now. Um, but I would, I'm going to vote no on it also. Anything else? Yes. I, I was hoping that, um, Matt, you might be able to enlighten us a little bit more because I, I, I appreciate, Chris, the perspective you're bringing because you were on the park committee and that's experience that a lot of us do not have. But my memory on this, though, is that for a long time, <coughs> the fee that was derived from from the group use was far lower than that, and then when it went to 25,000, that was a significant leap at that time. Is that correct? I believe that's, I believe that's correct. Um, and if, I also am just looking for clarification, Chris, on, on what you're, so you're suggesting that at a minimum it should be going up per year by the rate of inflation or something thereabouts, which when I just looked up was 2.3% for last year. So if we were just on that, I, I understand your desire to look at the entire fee structure and right size it and all that kind of thing. And maybe now's the time to do that, maybe it's not. But even just on the basis of that premise, the increase from 25,000 to 27,500 is well north of the 2.3% rate of inflation, which, go ahead, uh, uh, so, for, uh, for one year. For one year, for 10 yes, years. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes, so. Yes, yep. But I, I, I guess, I'm a little conflicted about, uh, you know, sort of changing the rules of the game, if you will, midway through the third quarter. Um, it, it, it's not unlike the discussion we had around other fees and other um, entities using Fort Williams where we said, you know, okay, we need to play some catch up here, but we're not going to do it all at once. So that, that the, the increase from 25 to 20, Seven five is is well north of the annual rate of inflation for one year. I, I'm not sure, and and I guess what what I finish with is for tonight. I, I'm probably not interested in um, sort of negotiating that dollar amount on the fly. So I don't know if this is specifically time sensitive to this meeting and a decision needs to be made by a certain time or if it's something that should be referred back to the Fort Williams committee that already says in this agenda item that they're gonna be, per our direction, looking at looking at those fees in their March meeting. So how, how time sensitive is this item, I guess? Yeah, Matt, I was wondering the same thing and what the discussion was, if you happen to know around that specific number. A, a couple of items, if I may, Madam Chair. Uh, when it's all said and done, they'll be paying in excess of 30,000 this year just because there's the 27.5, that's for the, the large use request, but they're also paying an additional $2,500 for the uh, parade ground that they use as well for the the post-race events uh, that, that evening and uh, and then the night before the race event that they have. So that that puts it at 30,000 and then they'll pay, uh, and I, I shared this with Councilor Starr earlier today as well, just uh, to try to, because he had some great questions and you know, I'm grateful that he asks before too so we can try to get some information ahead for the council. Uh, there's also, we have on that day a parks, the parks foreman and an equipment operator as well that they, that they pay for and that's about, you know, for all intents, for roughly 800 bucks for the day. So it's about 30,800 is what they'll be paying this year. Uh, so that gets a little bit closer to, I mean, if Councilor Straws, you know, his postulation is to say five bucks a head, you're probably looking more like 35 grand to 37.5 if you do it that way. Um, but the, looking at the whole, like the larger picture of it all this year, there's, they're probably gonna be spending about 31,000 roughly to, to use the park that day. Uh, the other thing is the park committee had looked at doing this on a three year ramp up and then the, the race people came in at their last meeting before uh, their, their recommendation said, you know, would you consider 
us coming back and then having a further discussion about this with the Parks Committee. So the next two years are far from far from over. So they're looking to have this discussion again at their March meeting to revisit this and determine what they want to make a recommended uh, fee for next year and the year after. So uh, they can address that. And I think you know the council comments this evening, quite honestly, should be fruitful for them. I know Kathy uh, Raft is here this evening, and she may have further information about their last meeting. If there, if if there's if I've over looked anything, but I think. They, yes, they propose to pay 275 for the next five years. Come on up, if you want to come on up. Sorry, Kathy. So three members from the HB committee, John Samuelson, um, Maya Cohen, and Angela Best came and they presented to pay 27.5 for the next three years, uh, five years, excuse me. And they said they had, were paying other fees associated with it, not just the 25,000. We found out they do pay the 25,000 plus 2,400 for the other group use of the other parts of the park that they're utilizing, as well as the operator and the parks foreman. So in through all of the discussion, and we didn't want to do it all in one year increase, we agreed to do the 27.5 for the first year this year and then to revisit it in March for the next few years. And in addition to that, there's also fees for the public safety personnel that are on, you know, discharge for that day that are that are lined up with it. So we also bill for that, and the town receives revenue from, well, offsetting the revenue for our expenses for the day. If I may. Yes. Uh, so, again, this is it. I, I appreciate the, oh, let's not increase the fee suddenly on them, like out of the blue, but this has been on their radar since 2016. This was supposed to have happened last year, was the original intent, was my, my understanding. And I'm not saying let's arbitrarily make up a number. I'm saying let's apply the exact same fee structure that is applied to every other user of the park, which is $5 a head plus the site fees that Ms. Raftis referenced. And frankly, my recollection is the head count is based on the number of people attending, not the number of people participating. So if we're talking, if I'm willing to say, okay, let's start at the six. That brings us to somewhere in the 30 ballpark, but if you applied it apples to apples with how other people, my recollection is the way we've looked at these other nonprofits with attendees, we're really talking 15 times $5 a head. So we're really talking 75,000 is what they should be paying if they're paying what every other user of the park pays. And again, I'm simply saying let's treat everyone equally I don't see why we're treating this one entity different from every other nonprofit or anyone else that wants to come into the park to use it. Um, before, Jamie, did you have a comment, Jeremy? Um, well, I, I'm just, I, I'm trying to recall the discussion at the last Fort Williams Park Committee, I, I, um, and I'm recalling some discussion around some of the, the other fees that they're paying. It strikes me that this, a unique feature of this event is that there are other parts of the event that are occurring off of Fort Williams in addition to the parts of the event that occur on Fort Williams. Um, and so I'm, I'm not, I, my, I would, I intend to vote in favor of the motion that was presented tonight um, with the fee structure as it's been presented and, and discussed with uh, with uh, um, Fort Williams Park Committee, um, but I think it also would probably be worthwhile, um, based on the discussion that I heard at the Parks Committee, to step back and look at some, I, I'd be in favor of looking at that larger cost to the organizer, which includes not just the fees for the Fort Williams Park, but they're also looking at increases in the other public safety fees that they're paying as well. And, and bringing some, whether it's the you know the per person structure that Councillor Straw has proposed, or some other way of looking at the entire package of fees that are being charged to this operator as a package for all of those variety of municipal services that they're using. And I don't know what the number is, but um, it seems seems fair to look at it all together. Go ahead, Jamie. Um, I have a question for either Kathy or Matt. Um, do you know what the next highest um, participation or, or, or number of people event would be, like even if it's in the ballpark? So if we're using Chris's 
number and let, let's split the difference and say eight or 9,000 people when you factor in participants, spectators and, and, and officials and all that kind of stuff. Do you, do you have any idea what like the next highest number of people usage for a group use is? Other than the school ones that are for free? Because graduation- I'm just talking about the number of people. I, I, I'm not even talking about money. I'm, Graduation, Cape Days, I would assume those are the more higher numbers. Uh, the walks are in the lo much lower numbers, the other group use for numbers. Is there any other use that's over 1,000, 2,000 people even? No. I, I, if I may continue, the, the point I'm bringing up, I, I just think this is such an outlier. Uh, I, I think it, it's, it's, a, it's difficult to apply the same measure, and I'm sure that that goes to the rationale of why it was singled out in the way it was to begin with. I'm totally in support of trying to get the most that we can out of the organization. I have no problem with that. Um, I, I think strictly applying the $5 per person um, rationale is is probably just a little off off kilter based on the outlier size of the event. If, if we were having other five to 10,000 person events and things like that, I'd certainly want to make sure everybody was playing by the same rules, but in so much as that this is the one thing that happens there every year that is of that scale and magnitude, I, I'm just not sure that it's the right measure to apply. Yes. Uh, fair enough, good point. Um, and I think that's perhaps how they ended up but we don't know with the original 25. Mm -hmm. But if we go with that rationale, what I could have perhaps supported tonight would have been, it was tw in 2011, it was 25,000. Let's go with a 2% per year inflation rate. They knew this was coming in 2016. 2% over nine years, roughly my calculation is it should be close to 34,000 this year, just to have us break even with the real dollar amount we were getting in 2011. So if the proposal was 34, I'd say fine, but we need to revisit this for the subsequent years and get this, our ducks in a row and treat this entity the same way every other entity is treated. But anything less than the rate of inflation over that since 2011, I, I, I can't justify it. But I, I've said my piece, so I'm ready to vote whenever everyone else is. Is there any more discussion? No. If, if I may, Madam Chair. Uh, just one thing I will say is that the race is not making a small fortune off from uh, operating it. And uh, I know they, they do count their, their pennies fairly fairly closely. Uh, the most recent year, I think they were looking at gross revenues of roughly 850,000, but their uh, expenses were roughly 780. So they ran on about a, you know, about a $70,000 margin for the race of which they, you know, they'll pay the town uh, for a lot of different areas, you know, police and fire probably this year it'll be closer to 35,000 with, you know, when they throw everything in for police coverage and, you know, fire fire police that day and other things along those lines, busing, uh, other expenses that they have. Plus, uh, they do make their charitable con uh, charitable donation of roughly 30,000 plus annually. So um, there are a lot of different parts that move in there that the race, you know, the race folks could talk about probably more effectively, but uh, but I do think that the council discussion will be very fruitful for, you know, for the park committee to go forward as well uh, to, to make recommendations for the next couple of years as well. And I think Councilor Straw's points are very, very strong to, for them to consider. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm comfortable also that the committee is going to be revisiting this um, in March. Although I do think at that point we may want to have them a little more involved, um, have a little more discussion with them. Um, okay, uh, I'm going to call the question then. All in favor of the motion on the table? Just, do I need to name them? Just three. Three in favor? Um, all opposed? Two opposed. The motion passes. Motion fails then. I don't remember. Is that? What's that? 
So it failed? Yes. That, um, I'd propose that we approve all of the uses in the packet with the exception of um, the beach to beacon use. Uh, is there, is that a motion? Uh, sorry, yeah, so here, let me, tr let me try a little better. Um, Uh, there's no draft. Oh, here we go. I propose that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council approves the following 2020 group uses and fees for Fort Williams Park. Um, the Cape Elizabeth Little League, the Walk to Cure Arthritis Walk, the Cape Elizabeth High School graduation, and Cape Elizabeth Family Fun Day on the dates indicated in our packet. Is there a second? I'll second that. Councilor Devereaux. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? It is. Do I say five or even? That's what we're not okay. I would say the number. Five, five, zero. <laughs> Passes. Uh, okay. Yes. Caleb. So I'll make another motion. I move that the Cape Elizabeth Town Council approves the 2020 group use uh, for the Beach to Beacon 10K road race at the group use fee. And I'll, for me, this is. Oh, this is an aside from the motion, at a fee of uh, $34,000. Uh, is there a second for that motion? Seeing none? Nope. I'll, I'll second it for, so we can discuss it. Okay. Uh, a discussion on the motion on the table. So that's roughly the uh, 25,000 from 2011 at an escalator of 2% uh, over nine years um, using roughly their, their rough head count and then adjusted accordingly to reflect the head count from last year, which was 6,417, which is one thing we didn't discuss is that in 2011 uh, or 2010 when this fee came, was, when, when this fee was originally kind of contemplated, it sounds like, the participation was around 56, 5,700. The participation last year, if my number is correct, was about 6,400. So participation is going up, the number of bodies there is going up. The idea that the fee has remained flat when costs are going up, participation's going up. So for me, I crunch all those numbers and 34,000 is the status quo. Yes, Councilor So Gerber. can you, again, clarify, you're basing that 34000 on the on the $5 per person or not? Uh, uh, no. no. If we did okay. $5 a person, which would no, be the... That's fine. No, you no, answered the question. No. Um, second thing is, you were saying earlier that they've known this is coming. That's been since 2016, right? Correct? Correct. Yeah. Yep. So uh, I would... Uh, I. In the spirit of fairness, I, I would propose that if we're going to do this, we factor in the, the add-on from 2016, not go back and effectively penalize going back to 2011. Should, should, the, should people have reasonably thought that this was a likelihood? Sure, but you're basically going back to retroactive years and and charging for that when that's already been agreed to. Um, I, I think if a signal was made through discussion at meetings, both from the council, you know, directive down to the committee, as well as the committee discussing it amongst themselves, and things fell through the cracks, and you know, we didn't stay on top of it as well enough as we should have in order for us to make sure that that council will was being carried out, then I think, okay, I'm, I'm willing to entertain discussion around that, but. It feels punitive to go back to 2011. Um, the, the other thing, just while I have the floor that I'll say on this, is that I think this whole thing underscores the importance of the council being much better engaged with the committees that serve to advise us. And I'm a, I'm a little frustrated, while I fully respect the position that both you and Councilor Devereaux have taken, Chris, I'm, I'm a little frustrated that we're having this discussion here. I, I, I wish we could have had the opportunity to either workshop this in advance or, um, or just ha had some other forum than, than doing this like we are now. That being what it is, um, it, the council has long heard me harangue about the fact that we no longer have liaisons to the committees, and this is a perfect example of 
I think um, the, the good work and business that the committees are doing becoming misaligned with the direction of the council uh, because there isn't good enough communication flowing back and forth. So whether that comes back in the form of liaisons, whether it comes back in the form of more regular reports formally made to the council, I know that there are minutes of those committee meetings and we all have the ability to attend any of those meetings that we want and all that kind of stuff, but I think we've got to facilitate better communication. This isn't the first time this has happened with the Fort Williams committee and it's through no fault of theirs. And I, 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 I place the blame on us as a council for not being better prepared for this tonight. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to respond to um, Councillor Garvin. I completely agree with Councillor Garvin. I feel that if we go back um, 10 years, that's too far and is punitive. But I think that looking back four years is very reasonable since this was something that they've been paying this fee for 10 years now. They um, had an idea that this was going to change in 2017 and it didn't. And like um, Councillor Strauss said, the um, Participation has increased, there's more people. I think that it's, fair, it's very reasonable that the fee's also going to increase, especially after 10 years. Um, but I, I believe that 34,000 is just too high. I don't know what uh, our number would be at 2% um, a year for four years. Nope. Yes. It would be less than two to seven five. <laughs> That's the irony. Uh, um, <laughs> so it's actually lowering what the Park Commission proposed. Uh, if we instead went with the, uh, and, and I'm actually, I'd be willing to withdraw my motion and make a different motion, but before doing that, the if we want to go for just easy, straightforward, is let's just go $5 ahead. They had six, my understanding is it was 60, roughly 6,400 participants. We're going to just use participants, not everyone that shows up. 6,400 times $5 ahead and that's the per head fee and then the additional per site fees that they currently pay those then get included afterwards. But that I think then becomes 32,000. Um, but then it's the, how, how did we reach the number? It's the $5 ahead that we charge everyone else. Yes, Councilor Gabriel. So with all due respect, I ha re have to agree with Jamie. Uh, we have a Fort Williams Park Commission this item was on their agenda. The council gave them clear direction to evaluate the fee structure for the, for the Beach to Beacon Committee. They came up with a proposal in conjunction with the applicant that went through a public process in good faith and arrived at a number and a schedule for moving us in the direction that the council asked them to go. And I, for one, am not comfortable sitting up here in, you know, with less information than was available to the committee when they made this decision and picking a fairly arbitrary number out of the air. I think if we want to send this back to the Fort Williams Park Commission and ask them um, to look at this again and come with it up with a different proposal, I, I'm okay with that, but I, I, don't, I don't feel comfortable I, I'm willing a, a fee in a structure that feels just as arbitrary to me as pulling $25,000 out of the air. So I'm willing to withdraw my motion if Jamie wants to draw, withdraw a second if someone else wants to make a motion. I think Councilor Devereaux had a comment I'd just like first. to respond to Councilor Gabrielson. Um, I agree that we need to be more involved with um, the committees, especially Fort Williams. However, we're at the town council and um, we've set up committees so that they can review these items, have discussions, and then bring it before us. And then it's up to us to make the decision, not the committee. So I feel that um, the committee came up with an idea, they have a number. It'd be great if they were here to present it to us and then we could decide. But I really feel that um, we're elected by the residents and it's up to us to make the decision, um, not the committees. Uh, yes, Councilor Garvin. I totally agree with that. I, uh, the point I was making was more about our own shortcomings in the process, not, um, not overriding the decision or recommendation of the committee, which we've done many times on many other different things and uh, for, you know, sometimes good reasons. But um, I, I, I cannot vote in favor of applying the $5 um, per person um, uh, fee for two reasons. Number one is 
um, we're, we're using a completely estimated number. If we were gonna do that, in all fairness, I think if, if, we're, if we're holding all entities to the same standard, then we need to know what that number of people is, not only participants, spectators, uh, other race organizers and officials. I'm gonna guess that it's well north of 6,400 people, and um, I, I'm not at all set, comfortable with setting a precedent today that says, oh, well, just for this, we're, I, I think we're setting ourselves up for a way worse problem by saying, oh, well, we used 6,400 just because we needed to make a decision tonight. Right. I also, like I said earlier, I think that that $5 per person number um, is much more in line and applicable for the standard size activity that happens at the fort, um, the standard you know, large group event versus the one outlier um, that is the Beach to Beacon race. So, um, I, I know that you want to withdraw the motion anyway, based on the $34,000 number. I'm happy to withdraw my second. Um, I'm not sure where we're going to get to tonight on actually hitting a number, though. So I, I don't know if the, the wiser course of action is to refer this back to the committee. Yeah, um, I, I would agree that um, I'm not comfortable workshopping numbers on the fly either. So is is there a motion perhaps to refer this back to the committee um, or, or even to a workshop with the committee? No, no uh, motions? Yeah. Um, I'll make a motion to refer this back to the committee. Um, it'd be nice if at least one counselor was at that meeting with the committee. Is there a second for that? Second. Councilor Straw. Uh, any discussion on this motion? So uh, in conjunction with that motion, so I, uh, I totally hear the, the points that Jeremy and Jamie have made. Very good, very valid points. So in conjunction with that, what I feel has always been missing from this number, so when we send this to the committee, what I want to hear from them is, what is the rationale for why this number is what it is? Because it's just seemed like an arbitrary and capricious number that was pulled out of a hat that we've just run with. If we're gonna apply a different standard for this entity, explain why we have this number. Not just, oh, we ha used it in 2011, but why, why is this the right number? So that's what I'd like from them. And if they give me some rationale, then I might say, well, you know, they really discussed this, they really contemplated it, I'll, I'll defer to their wise, because I, I think very highly of that group, they do a great job. But, it, and if they give me a rationale, I, I may go with it, even if I disagree with it, because I'll be like, they thought about this harder than I did, they really dug into it. But absent a rationale, it just seems like they pulled it out of a hat. Mm -hmm. um, okay, all in favor of the motion on the table? which is to refer this back to the Fort Williams Park Committee. Five to zero. The motion passes. Madam Chair, if I may? Yes. Uh, Fort Williams Park Committee is meeting on Thursday night. I just Excellent. emailed Kathy to see if we could have this added to the agenda. Um, <laughs> so uh, uh, I know I'll be there as well that evening because uh, we're talking about a couple of other items. So uh, try to get this teed up for the next. March March next Council time. meeting. Yes, that would be wonderful. So, Thank you. Yeah, should be good. Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Okay. Is it this Thursday or next? You said. It's this Thursday. This Thursday. Okay. Thank you. Thirteen. What time is that meeting? Six thirty. Six or six thirty. Thank you. I believe it's six thirty. Yeah. So the twelfth. Thirteenth at six thirty. Great. Thank you. Please, so if it's anything different, I will. Oh, sorry, 6 p.m. 6 o'clock on the 13th. The 13th. At the community center. At the community center. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, moving on to item 33 2020, appointments committee recommendations. Um, the Town Council's Appointments Committee is recommending a number of appointments to various town boards and committees. Those are outlined specifically in the agenda. The vacancies were re-advertised as they were not filled during the annual appointments process. Anyone from the public will... Can I just jump in real quick? Yes. I just want to disclose that I'm friends with the Ketchums. And <laughs> Corey is one of the um, uh, appointees here and I'm grateful that she is, but I just wanted to disclose that. So. <laughs> uh, any issues with the... the Okay, um, anyone from the public wishing to comment on this item before we proceed? 
seeing no one. All right. Uh, do we have a motion to approve the recommendations of the appointments committee to fill vacancies on town boards and committees? Said terms are effective immediately. Um, those appointments would specifically be Corinne Ketchum on the Conservation Committee for an unexpired term until December 31, 2020. Christophe Hein de Vries uh, for a three year term until December 31st, 2022. And then on the Recycling Committee, um, Bruce Rayner for a three year term until December 31, 2022. Do we have a motion? I so move. Councillor Devereaux, second? Second. Councillor Straff. Any discussion on this item? I would just like to say that um, we had 11 people apply for basically three positions. Everyone was very well qualified. Everyone that applied would have been fabulous on these committees and I really hope that those of you who were not selected will consider applying again for um, any committees that come up and it's just wonderful to see so many people in Cape wanting to um, participate in a volunteer position like that. So kudos to residents and thank you all for applying. Yes, Councilor Shaw. I, I just want to reiterate that. We're not just saying that for lip service. We really, really want you to keep applying. So please, so, thank you. Uh, any other discussion on this item? All in favor of the motion? Five to zero, motion passes. And thank you to all of you for your service and assistance. Um, moving on to item 34-2020, review of wetland regulations. Um, we recently received some correspondence from a resident, Suzanne McGinn, um, on January 25th, 2020, asking the town council to consider stricter local wetland restrictions for development in Cape Elizabeth where vernal pools are present. Ms. McGinn's request to review stricter wetland regulations is consistent with recommendations, uh, recommendation 48 of the 2019 comprehensive plan. Um, is there anyone from the public wishing to comment on this item before we discuss it as a council? If you could just, when you reach the podium, please identify yourself by name and address. Hi, I'm Suzanne again, 1180 Shore Road. And I just want to thank you for considering this increased ordinance for um, our wetland regulations to protect our vernal pools in our community. I think it's um, I think it's important that we step up and try to fill the holes that are at the state level to preserve um, the rural character of our community. So thank you for considering this, and I hope it makes it to ordinance committee. Thank you. Thank you. So the action that we're looking for this evening is whether to refer recommendation number 48, which is to review and update the resource protection permit standards to emphasize avoidance and minimization of wetland alterations um, to the ordinance committee for review. So Councilor Garvin. Councilor Devereaux. Any discussion on this item? Uh, so I'm just curious, the expect, is the expectation here that ordinance committee will work out a, a concept that will then be referred to planning board for subsequent review or what would the process be here? Just, just under looking at the complexity of regulating vernal pools, I'm curious. Did you want to jump in, Matt? If I may, Madam Chair. look on your face. If, if yes, I may, to the chair. Uh, yes, Councilor, <laughs> Councilor Gabrielson, that's a great question. It would go through the standard procedure. So uh, first it would go to Ordinance Committee. They would work it uh, for a time period and then it would come back to the Council for the Council to look at it through workshop. And then once it got to the point that it was acceptable to the Council, then they would refer it to the Planning Board and the Planning Board would have its, its uh, day in the sun and then it would come back to the Council and then move through the regular ordinance. Uh, 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 acceptance process. Any other discussion or questions on this item? Um, all in favor? Five to zero. Thank you. Okay, item 35-2020, write-offs of uncollectible real estate tax liens. Um, the finance director is recommending the write-off of uncollectible real estate tax liens from 1981 to 2016 for an amount of $16,713.15. Um, is there anyone from the public wishing to comment on this item? 
seeing none. Um, I see our finance director is here. Do you have any additional comments or would you mind just queuing up this, this item for the council? <coughs> John Cordovaro, Finance Director. I don't have any additional comments, but I'm available to answer questions. Uh, okay, well, let's let's get a, a motion on the table first, and then move on to discussion. Um, do I have a motion to authorize the town treasurer to write off $16,713.15 in real estate tax liens representing 22 properties for the period 1981 through 2016 as one property's liens have been satisfied and discharged but not taken off the books? One property's tax liens were based on an improper assessment for property outside of the town and should have been taken off the books. Eight tax lots being fractional ownership of a single lot that the town took possession of and should have been released from the tax records, and 12 properties having been abandoned and which the town took possession of and should have released the tax liens from the tax records. Um, those are all specified by lot um, with tax lien amounts in the agenda for this evening. Do we have a motion? So moved. Councilor Devereaux, is there a second? Councilor Garvin, um, discussion or questions on this item? Yes, Councilor Garvin. I think that the one that's outside of town, we should judge <laughs> twice. <laughs> See what happens, but no, otherwise, this is a bookkeeping exercise, so. Uh, I agree, I'm gonna vote yes on this, since this is um, a bookkeeping cleanup that we need to do for the town here. Councilor Straub. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you both. This is fabulous. Uh, this is, again, you guys, we're doing a great job, and I'm really looking forward to the GFOA certification in here. <laughs> no pressure, but <laughs> anyway. Okay, um, all in favor of the motion? Five to zero, the motion passes. Thank you, John. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Item 36-2020, hardscape improvements at Portland Headlight. Um, on October 16th, 2019, item number 143-2019, the Town Council authorized the funding of hardscaping pedestrian improvements at the Headlight in an amount not to exceed $90,000 to be provided by the Portland Headlight Fund. The improvements were sent to bid, the bids were received, received were greater than the estimated 90,000. The town manager is recommending 40,000 be transferred from the unassigned fund balance to the headlight fund to pay for the difference in the cost of the project and professional services related to the design, project administration, construction administration, and site inspections. Um, anyone from the public w wishing to comment on this item? Seeing no one. Um, so what we are looking for this evening, um, and do you have comments first, Matt? Did you want to cue anything up? If I may, uh, Chair, uh, thank you. Uh, yes, we did go out to bid on this. We did have two participants come back, yes, with, uh, with, their, with their bids, so they came in uh, just under 10% greater than the originally anticipated amount, but then uh, we had noticed that uh, we overshot a little bit as well as with the uh, professional services that come along with the, with the project as far as administration and, uh, and the whole, I guess you could call it the, the construction administration, site inspections and then the additional services that need to take place and that's why we came back to the council this evening to, to get that done. We are looking to get the project uh, completed this spring uh, before the season uh, really comes into full effect. Uh, so that's why we brought it back to the council and uh, it, will not, it will not grow greater than the amount that we have there. Uh, it is a precarious time at this moment in our, uh, in our economy to go out to bid on many different projects because they are, they are, they are all coming back heavier than what we anticipated, unfortunately. Uh, so that's why we, we brought this back to the council this evening for uh, to bump it uh, a subtle amount, well, more than a subtle amount. I have a question for you. Uh, yes, it, Councilor Devereaux. Is that typical to just have two bids on something like this? It looks like a big project. I'm surprised there's only two bids. Yeah, it, uh, if I may, uh, we reached out to, I think no less than eight or 10 different contractors to see uh, where they were at. Uh, yeah, 
qualified it with a couple of conversations to some who did not participate. And it's a question of them just being loaded with a lot of work to do. And uh, part of it may have been the constraints of having to do it this spring, but I think mostly it was just a function of there are just so many, uh, you know, there's so many jobs in their pipeline already that it helped, uh, helped them decide not to bid on it. So this is something that we wouldn't send out to bid. Um, we wouldn't send another request for a proposal. We would just accept the bids that we have. I think they, yeah, based on the numbers, it, they were very well thought out and laid out. I mean, it comes down to labor and materials, uh, but that's how they had had placed it. But uh, they were, you know, we, we did qualify both bids we did that we did receive, and they were both from very reputable uh, contractors. Councilor So to the extent you can disclose this then, so it, uh, we have two bids. We're comfortable after having looked at them that we underestimated originally. We're looking at them, we're like, yeah, these, these seem reasonable. And we would, it, and it seems like it would be reasonable to just go with one of these two rather than put this out a year because what they gave us isn't um, outrageously overpriced. It's like, like looking at everything, yeah, no, this was probably what it, we should have allocated initially. That's a, that's a solid summarization right. of it. And if, if you look in you know, the stories across the state, uh, that's part of the reason why segments seven and eight get pushed out two years was because the PACS funds that we did uh, for all the bids that were coming back last spring for some of the larger regional projects were coming in 25 to 30 percent greater than what they were looking at. So uh, to have us be in the you know, roughly 10% more just on the on the construction side of it. it. Seemed like that fell within a range of where we were at. And uh, <coughs> after going through looking at their analyzation of their of the bids that they did provide us, uh, they seemed like they were in line with, with where they were at. Yes, that's um, I have a quick question. The original appropriation was made from the Portland Headlight Fund, and the request here is to appropriate from the unassigned fund balance. I know that the unassigned fund balance is quite healthy. I don't, I don't object to using those dollars, if that's ultimately what we do. But I am just curious why we wouldn't just appropriate the additional forty thousand from, from the original account that was funding this project. Uh, thank you, Councilor Garvin. Yeah, part of the thought being that the uh, Portland Headlight Fund uh, contributed significantly this past year to the to the parking lot uh, improvements, and uh, we're looking to try to grow that back to more of a healthy balance as we get further for for future projects, and uh, looking at more of the, I guess you could say, the flexibility in one fund versus versus the other. Okay. Um, all right. If there are no other questions for Matt, what we're looking for is a motion to authorize the transfer of $40,000 from the unassized fund balance to the Portland Headlight Fund to pay for the difference in cost of the previously authorized $90,000 from October 16th, 2019, and professional services related to the design, project administration, construction administration, and site inspections. Do we have a motion? So moved. Councilor Garvin, is there a second? Yeah. Second. Um, any other discussion on this item? All in favor? Five to zero. Motion passes. Okay, moving on to item 37 2020, fee schedule. Um, at the Town Council goal setting workshop on February 3rd, the Council discussed including a review of the fee schedule in the 2020 goals. Um, this is something that's already come up tonight. <laughs> Anyone from the public wishing to speak on this item? Seeing no one. Um, so what we are looking for is a motion to refer the town fee schedule to a future workshop. So moved. So Straw, is there a second? <laughs> Councilor Devereaux. Any discussion on this item? Madam Chair, uh, yes. if I may, I just have one point uh, to, that I'd like to bring up. Met with department heads this morning and uh, let them know uh, that this was on the, you know, they obviously knew this was on the agenda, but asked them to take a review of all the uh, fees that they do have for each of their departments and if they had a recommended change that they'd like to see uh, to have that ready uh, for the council discussion. Uh, looking at trying to put this as part of the discussion on either the 18th or the 19th uh, during the budget season workshop. That way, uh, council can have that and ready, uh, trying to. Uh, align two birds with one stone, I guess, at this point, and thinking that would be a good appropriate time to have the materials ready for you and then move forward and maybe have uh, action for the April council agenda. Thank you. I think that is helpful. 
Yes. Um, would it be possible without creating too much extra work to have maybe a couple of communities for comparative benchmarks as well? Very much so. Great, Very thanks. Very much so, yep. Um, any other discussion on this item? All in favor? Five to zero. Motion passes. Okay, item 38-2020. Um, every year the council evaluates the performance of the town manager. Um, we will begin that this evening. So we're looking for a motion to enter into executive session pursuant to 1 MRS section 4056A to begin the annual evaluation of the town manager. Do I have a motion? Second. Councilor Devereaux, is there a second? Second. Councilor Shaw, uh, any discussion on this item? All in favor? It's five to zero, thank you. Yes. I don't think there'll be anybody here. I think you'll see the clear. Okay.